That's unfortunate. All right. I guess I'll have to do this the right way. Let me get a let me get something to eat real quick though. I'm a little hungry. Let me let me just stand here real quick and think about my course of action. Okay. Had a snack. Eight. Uh, it saddens me to say that I cannot, in fact, parry this man. So that attempt was all for naught. So let's give it a another go. Jesus. He wants me gone. I got really lucky dodging that. is killing me here.
just like men, shall we? That's it. 100,000 souls. And the soul of the lords. Uh, where is it? There it is. Soul of the lords. One of the twisted souls steeped in strength. Used to acquire numerous souls or transposed to extract its true strength. Since Lord Gwyn, the first lord of Cinder, many exalted lords have linked the first flame and it is their very souls that have manifested themselves as Defender of the Flame. He's an, an amalgamation of every linker of the fire. So, we can link the first flame and summon the Firekeeper. We can just stay, stay here and admire the gorgeous view. But I'm going to do this. The first flame quickly fades. Darkness will shortly settle. But one day, tiny flames will dance across the darkness. like embers linked by Lord's past. Ashen One. Hearest thou my voice still? There you go. There's Dark Souls 3. I feel like I missed a lot of content. But... Um... It's a pretty fun game to play. It's not my favorite Souls. I think that still goes to Souls 1. But it's pretty solid. The weapon arts are a nice inclusion, even if I didn't use them. Um, I'm not really a fan of the level design as much in this one. I mean, it's okay, but it's nothing special. I think maybe the standouts to me are like... Arch Dragon Peak is the whole environment change. Maybe because I just did it. Uh, the kiln aesthetically is very cool. Aerithil is very nice. I like Aerithil. Other than that, eh, I mean, they're not, it's not like they're terrible, but like, I don't have as vivid memories of the other areas as I do. Oh, the untended graves are awesome. Just for the fact that it's a parallel world. But, I mean, 
it's not exactly a spectacular level on its own because it's literally just a copy paste of the starting area uh, with a darker skybox. But it's still pretty cool. Um, yeah, I I mean, I know I was kind of harsh on Dark Souls 2, but at least that game was... Well, I wasn't harsh on Dark Souls 2, but I had a lot more to say about Dark Souls 2. But that game was at least trying something different. That game was trying different things. It, the, Dark Souls 3 feels very safe. There's a lot of, hey, remember Souls 1? Hey, do you like Souls 1? Hey, look, it's Anne Orlando. Hey, look, it's this thing and that thing. Uh, this works the same. The Estus is back to normal, sort of. So it's okay. Whoops. Uh, yeah. So you can, um, start Journey 2. I didn't mean to hit that button. I keep hitting buttons, and I don't mean to. I just skipped the credits. Good job. Alright, so... It tosses you back at Firelink. With your 100,000 souls. Um, I can transpose these Lord Souls. So in case you haven't finished any side quests, you can do that before beginning New Game Plus. I'm not going to do New Game Plus right now because I want to do the um, DLC whenever I get my hands on it on a regular New Game Cycle. So, you know, I don't go into it going, oh, this is hard if I'm on New Game Plus 3 or whatever, right? Uh, so we have a Sunlight Spear, Miracle of Gwyn, the First Lord, hurls a Sunlight Spear. The tales of Gwyn's Arc Dragon hunts describe the inception of the Age of Fire. And the Firelink Greatsword. The Lords of Cinder linked the first flame, and this greatsword was wielded by their deific manifestation. This coiled sword, found thrust in the bonfire, existed long before the throneless lords themselves. Ember. The fading flame momentarily illuminates and launches itself forward. 20 strength, 10 dexterity. In addition to that, if I recall correctly. Ah. Yep, you can get the Firelink set. You can dress up as the Soul of Cinder. Ashen one, one. And let's slap that on real quick. That's Alva. Where's it? Aimless Knight. One. Two. Three. Four. And the weapon that goes with that. Probably just scrolled past. There it is. So there you are. There's your Dark Souls. Your Dark Souls 3. It's a regular greatsword. Got the vertical swings. You can do a fire attack with it and imbue your sword with fire. Unfortunately, it does not mode change like uh, the actual Soul of Cinder does but we can win them all huh so uh, as I was saying yeah Souls 3 is very safe it's it's a fun solid game to play I don't think it does enough different to really make it like stand out like it's got all the good it's it's like a greatest hits kind of thing like all right here's your Anna Orlando here's your um uh, what you call? There's your Gwendolyn reference. There's your uh, Sunbro thing. Um, the Nameless King is a standout boss. He's he's pretty fun, honestly. Uh, some of the bosses are not so fortunate, like the dragon that you literally just plunging attack to kill, or um, Yorm is a real bad gimmick boss. I don't like the Storm Ruler thing. I wish you could just do it normally. I mean, you can do it normally, but it'll take forever and a day. So. Not exactly, um, you know, brilliant boss design. Deacons of the Deep. Eh, neat concept. Not exactly great execution. I think the Abyss Watchers are a little better in that regard, and the Abyss Watchers are still pretty much a cakewalk. Um, yeah, uh, overall, I think the bosses are not as strong as the other two games. I know Dark Souls 2 had a couple of problem bosses. Um, but, like, for instance, Eudex and Champion Gundir are pretty good. Um, Soul Cinder is alright. He's, I mean, he's not a particularly, like, impossible boss, but he's a good boss, like, thematically. 
compare that to, say, uh, what was a Souls 2 boss that I didn't like? The gimmick with, um, Mila, Myla, I, I don't know, I remember her name was now, where you had to go around the level and drain the poison pool, like, eh, I mean, she, her, the fight itself was fine, the gimmick not so great, um, actually, uh, I, I'm not really able to come up with a boss that I hated in Souls, well, no, I, not any bosses that I hated in Souls 2 at this very moment. I'm sure there were ones that I complained about during that playthrough. And, um, you know, it was just when this is bullshit, I, this is terrible design, I don't know, like... But at this moment, I'm really only th thinking of, like, major bosses, like... Oh, well, I guess there was the Undead Congregation that really wasn't a boss and that was an embarrassment. I guess it was like a breather boss kind of thing, but it sucked still. Um, Royal Rat Authority can be a little, eh. I mean, it's just a bunch of rats. There were, there were a couple of those bosses that were just like, it's a lot of enemies in one room. So that, yeah, that definitely, um, counts as far as not great boss design. Royal Rat Vanguard, I know I killed it right at the end of the game, but it's just a big rat. Like, there's nothing interesting going on there. So, yeah, I think although Souls 3 uh, mechanically is a much safer and more sound game than Souls 2, I think in terms of, like, enemy design and all, it's not as interesting. I'm not gonna say it's not as good, but it's not as interesting. Although, I will say I did like Pontiff Sullivan. I like his stand. Um, like I said, Soul of Cinder is pretty cool. Abyss Watchers are cool aesthetically, but not much else because it's just, again, focus on one enemy and you win the fight. I mean, most boss fights are like that, let me be fair, but it's just like you manage the adds, you kill the boss. It's. Yeah, eh. And uh, Twin Princes are alright. Lorian's a bit of a... Or not Lorian, Lothric is a bit of a pain with his missile spam. Uh, Aldrich is pretty straightforward. I can't really say much about him. Honestly, I think the NPC interactions are some of the best here. Although that might just be Sigvard carrying everything on his back. I l love that man. I love that man. He's He's so jolly. It's literally the world is ending around him, and he's just like, Yeah, I just killed a really tough boss. I think I'll take a nap right here. And goes to sleep. And he's drinking, and he's making Estes soup. So. Alright. Um, like I said, my thoughts are a little discombobulated right now. Uh, overall, Souls 3, I mean, I'll give it like an 8 out of 10, honestly. It's mechanically more sound than Souls 2. Returns to a lot of the things that are good in Souls 1, but the, the fan service can be a little much, and some designs are just not as interesting. Actually, I just forgot something. Uh, before I end this playthrough, let me go back to the High Wall of Lothric. This is this is our little post credits, if you will, our little bonus, because I forgot to do this. Yeah, I told you I was going to be at the end of the game, and. I was going to be like, oh, I forgot to do a thing. And sure enough, I forgot to do a thing. Uh, there was that dragon that was, you know, breathing fire up on the high wall. And I never got around to visiting him. So I'm going to do that now. You know, now that everything's said and done. You still have to take care of some of these problems. Ouch. Oh yeah, and I forgot an item there. I don't remember how to get to it. I have to drop off the side here. Oh yeah, up there is where the binoculars are, by the way. I went back to get them. Because I wanted to get some cool shots or whatever. 
Yep. Here we are. Put some gold pine resin here. Yeah, I mean, this game is pretty fun. Um, I miss power stancing. I like power stancing different weapons in Souls 2. Even though I didn't do it a lot, I like the concept. Club here. I mean, uh, I mean, the twin weapons are neat. I think it's a good compromise to just have, like, its own weapon class, as in, here's, you know, weapons designed specifically to be dual-wielded. But that also eliminates some of the freedom that you get in pairing, like, a spear and a greatsword or something dumb like that. Oh, the claymore was here the whole time. There's some of the unique movesets that you could, you know, mess with. Uh, twin blades are a glaring omission. I there's no there are no twin blades in this game that I know of, and it's kind of a shame, honestly, because twin blades are pretty fun. Again, not my type of weapon, although I do like helicoptering around. Oh, that's a mimic. Don't kick. Deep battle axe. That I should have gotten this at the beginning of the game. The deep battle axe will do. Um, it'll- it'll get you through a good portion of the early game without much trouble. So, it's kind of like the, uh, it's not exactly Drake Sword levels, but it does help. It does help. Okay, um, I'm not seeing a way up to the dragon that was up there. I think he just scurried off and left. I think it's a little too late for that now. But I at least got, uh, you know, missing items that I didn't get the first time around. I'm just gonna double check in case I'm missing something, because I, I really feel like you could have gotten up there and messed with that dragon. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just crazy. Probably crazy, yeah. I don't really see a path up there. It's just... Dragon Town, USA. Not really USA, but wherever the hell this is. Yeah, alright. And there's no false walls here or anything. Yep. Alrighty. Well. It was worth one more look around. I guess Dragon's off to uh, Elden Ring or something. Anyway, that's Dark Souls 3. I do hope this was somewhat enjoyable, despite the lack of really interesting things to say, because, I mean, it feels like common ground that's been treaded here. I haven't, if I haven't said that enough already. But, uh, that concludes the Souls trilogy. Uh, if I, I mean, I might play Bloodborne, I might play Sekiro. I kinda, kinda have the inkling to play Sekiro again, but we'll see how that goes. I do want to take a break from the Soulsborne franchise for a while. I mean, I did finish Elden Ring just prior to starting this back up. I think that shows in some regards, and I'm kind of soulsed out. So, we'll see what happens, but, uh, you know, don't go hollow.